Which role do data visualization play for the understanding of our globalized world? Well, I guess the amount of data is not going to go down over the next few years. And in order to make sense of that data, I mean, some people say we need better algorithms or better machine power, you know, faster computers. But I think we need, we need to get the human into the loop in understanding and making sense out of all that data. And if we visualize data, we can bring it into a form that is perceptible and accessible to our senses and that can help us make sense out of all these new amounts of data that are around us. And I guess that's an indispensable skill and opportunity for the next few years. Which role do you play? What's your personal role in the process from data collection to, to storytelling? In my projects, I usually I start at the very beginning and uh, help the client or the, the, the team I'm working with already in analyzing the data. So we look together what are interesting data sources, what are interesting patterns we can find in these data sources, what are interesting stories to tell, what are the best perspectives. And a lot of effort goes into exploring these data sets and finding different angles we can look at them. And then once we, we have found as a team a good, good way of looking at things, we try for the user to create a shortcut in that space. So we made all the complicated steps and also looked at all the dead ends, but in the end we want for the user something very straightforward and very condensed and boiled down to the essentials. And this is then when the, let's say, the more traditional design and production phase comes in, where we try to boil down everything we have learned on our journey into one really perfectly designed end product. What was your own favorite data project in the last year? Well, I guess the most interesting for myself was Notabilia. It's a visualization of deletion discussions on Wikipedia. And together with some researchers, I was looking at how these debates around the deletion discussions go, like who is um, voicing their opinion at what point and what is the sequence of votes. And uh, to me, this was very fascinating because in its raw form, it's very long text and you need to follow the whole debate but with the ana analysis we did on the text and then the visualization, we could suddenly see the recurring patterns in these discussions and we were able to draw one, one very coherent and interesting image out of this big space of debate, this very cultural phenomenon. And, uh, for me, that was a very satisfying project. Do you think it is important to focus on economic data in a new way? Well, economic data reflects a lot of our human activities and I think we can learn so much about our human race if we look at how economy works and the other thing is if we can improve economic mechanisms there's a big chance to improve the world of course so uh, looking at economic data is, is vital for in many areas I think. You have developed the idea of slow data what does it mean and is it your way to handle economic data for a new understanding of global complexities? Well the idea with slow data is you know there's fast food and slow food and I think a lot of the infographics we see on the web today they correspond more to fast food something that's like loud and oily and <laughs> sweet and it impresses you very much but only for a few seconds and then the next day something else is hit and slow food is a bit more an idea we take the ingredients serious we we take our time in preparation and also we take our time in consuming the product and the work I do are often very long-term projects and where a lot of effort goes into finding exactly the right thing to show. And I like to compare that more to a slow food or in this case, slow data approach. And I think it can deliver results and also engage audiences in a much deeper way. Maybe not so many people at once, but these fewer people in a much deeper way. And I think that's for many important issues can be more important in the end. So it might be better to influence a thousand people really deeply then shortly impress a million people in my view. For you it is not only storytelling what makes data visualizations useful. What other important aspects do you see? Well many people say a good data visualization tells a story. I personally believe a good data visualization tells a thousand stories in fact and not just one story because one story could also be told in one graphic or one short statement. But the power of data visualization is really that we can make a lot of perspectives accessible in one interface and users can go out and find their own story or look, their, look up their own hometown and really relate to data on that very personal level and not consume only pre-digested insights but find their own insights or maybe generate new questions 
based on the data. And this is what I always hope for that happens, that people actually find something in the data they find interesting and then go to other sources and look up more information on the same phenomenon and maybe find conflicting information and move a bit beyond this idea that we just consume pre-digested facts towards a really active um, exploration and, and dialogue with data. You call yourself a truth and beauty operator. In your eyes, what is the truth and beauty in GetVis, if any? GetVis is an interesting project because it's very hard to map the, the type of flow data that is at the core of this project. And I have, I have attempted at many times to find good visualizations for this type of data. And I think the, the project is really successful in providing such a simple but really deep interface to this complex type of data. And I, I'm sure it will be used in many, many different ways and different settings. And it definitely fills a gap that, that has not been really filled before. Which trends in data vi visualization do you see for the next years? And what is your personal vision of data visualization? Yeah. Well, personally, I'm getting more and more interested in non-standard ways of data representation. So I have been working with data sculptures, really producing 3D objects that represent data. This is getting much more affordable and accessible, be it via 3D printing or custom milling or other techniques. Um, we have also been looking into how to work with food to express information. That's the Data Cuisine project I've been involved with, together with Susanne Yashko. And as you can guess, the, the whole field is currently moving in all kinds of directions in parallel. And it's very exciting to see what, what new ways are being explored to, to represent and make accessible information today.